Prism Life Studio has a lot of really epic features built right in. Amazing text tools, an awesome audio visualizer, and a built-in countdown timer, and actually a lot more. And it's so easy to use as well, but there are a few features it has that you may not be aware of that can really help you stream better. Hello my YouTube friends, today I want to show you 5 hidden features that can easily improve your Prism live streams. So you know what? Let's get to it! The first one is the auto scene switcher. Okay, so to use this feature, first I'm going to take this and we're going to move it over here so we can see all of our scenes. Then what I'm going to do is actually create a scene. You can see all these scenes are kind of different. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add a window capture. Let's just call this DaVinci. Add it right there. And we'll just move this over here like this. And then what I'm going to do is click the plus. We're going to add a prism camera. And I already have one. So we're just going to go ahead, click on that. And we'll shrink it down here. So we're in the bottom right. So the whole point is that we've got like a tutorial screen. So maybe we start out here or here, wherever. It doesn't really matter where we start out. But we want it to switch to here whenever we activate DaVinci Resolve, which is this program right here. So it's pretty easy to do. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here into settings and we're gonna go to our tools and we're gonna go to the automatic scene switcher. Now we're gonna select which application we wanna switch right here and we're gonna do DaVinci Resolve. Then we wanna select what scene we wanna switch to. In this case, we just set up scene two as our tutorial scene. Then your windows, uh, if there's no window matches, you don't switch, obviously. So, uh, and you want to check for the switch this amount of time. We're going to go ahead and turn this on so it becomes active. You can see it's inactive. You turn it on, it becomes active. You have to go ahead and add it right there. DaVinci Resolve and click Close. Now, when we select DaVinci Resolve, you're going to notice that it switches automatically to scene two. So there we go. It's going to automatically switch to the scene of the tutorial whenever you select the application for the tutorial. So it doesn't matter what scene I'm on, if I select DaVinci Resolve, it will automatically switch over here like we're going to perform the tutorial. It's really awesome because you don't need to worry if you're doing tutorials. We can start out on this scene right here. It could be in full like that. And then if we want to switch over to the tutorial, instead of having to do any kind of thing on Stream Deck or select the scene or anything like that, all we have to do is select DaVinci Resolve and you're going to automatically be switching to the proper scene right here in your Prism Live Studio so you don't have to worry about anything. Then all you have to do is go back into Prism Live Studio and of course you can switch to whatever scene you want. And anytime that you go ahead and select this, it'll just automatically switch back. So the automatic scene switcher, awesome little tidbit and unknown tool that is really cool to use in Prism Live Studio. This tool will keep your stream on track and your recording on point. This next one is super helpful to keep you on schedule or to make sure that your stuff is recording properly when you do go live. So all we have to do is click the hamburger up here in the top left. We're going to go to our tools and we're going to go to the output timer. Here we can set up the stop streaming after. So this sets in stone exactly how long you're going to stream. And I've said it many, many times, your stream should have a specific length of time. Well, this is an easy way to make sure that that happens. So you set your hours, you set your minutes and all that stuff. And you can enable every time you're streaming and it will let you know when it's time to stop. It will also do the exact same thing with recording. It will start or stop your recordings over a certain period of time. So you can actually set this up so it doesn't record files that are too ridiculously big. And you're going to see in here the countdown which will tell you when your stream is going to end and of course when your recordings are going to end. So you can easily set this up to limit the amount of time that you spend live streaming or doing whatever. Trust me, it's really important for you to have limits set on how long you do these things. You just can't maintain a high level of entertainment if you just go live for however long you wanna go live. 
you really have to be disciplined and make sure that your streams only last a certain amount of time. This is the perfect way to do it. It's also the perfect way to limit the size of your recordings and all that kind of stuff to make it really easy to record your live streams and be able to edit that up later. So I absolutely love the output timer feature and obviously you can set it to stop recording after a certain period of time to limit the size and then you can start it again thereby limiting the size of the files and differentiating each segment possibly of your live stream to make it easier to edit later. So that's the output timer, check it out. I love this feature, it's awesome. Likes and comments are super easy things that you can do to help push this video to a wider audience. So take a second down below and let me know how I'm doing. And while you're there, if you're not subscribed, please do. It really does help me continue to make content that helps you. So thanks. You can separate all your audio sources in Prism, but a lot of folks don't know how to turn it on and actually use it. Okay, so this is a feature not a lot of people have figured out how to use. We're gonna go and create another scene. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to the hamburger menu here, and we're gonna go ahead and go to our Prism Lab. And you can see application audio output capture. This allows you to use lots of different sources instead of just using one source for all of your desktop audio. So let me show you what I mean. Well, let's go ahead and add our camera right here and we'll go with our prism camera, bada bing. You could see that my prism audio is right there. So let's say we wanted to play a game. Well, we'll click the plus and we'll go and we'll add a game. So we're gonna capture a monitor and we'll just call this game, click OK, and we'll select the monitor that we're going to capture right here. And there we go. So we've got a Star Wars game up here, and we'll put it below my prism camera. But we want audio for this game, so we're going to click the plus, and we're going to go to our application audio capture, click OK. We'll call this game audio, and we'll click OK. And what we have to do is go ahead and click the plus to get a list. And this particular case, it's the Star Wars Squ Squadrons. We'll click OK. And bada bing. Now we're going to have Star Wars Squadrons audio. So now when I select it, you can see that we have audio. And we're all set with our game audio. But, you know, maybe that's not the only audio we want to have. And you can see that that audio automatically turns off when we don't have that selected. But that's not how it always has to work. What we're going to do is we're going to add another one. We're going to click the plus. We're going to go to Application Audio Capture. And this time we're going to do Discord. We'll add that as another source. We're going to click the plus. And we're going to drop this down and we're going to add Discord. Click OK. Go ahead and just click the OK button. And now if our Discord is making any audio sounds, which in this case it isn't, we can go ahead and capture that. And we can also do Spotify. So we're gonna go to Audio Application Capture. We're gonna click the plus, we'll go to Spotify. Go ahead and click the plus, drop this down and look for it right here. And wait, it's not showing anything. Well, that's okay. We'll click Cancel right there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here into Spotify and we're gonna click Play. So we're getting some audio from it. And then we can go back in here. If we click the plus, now we should show it right here. Spotify, okay, and okay. And when we go ahead and expand this up, we can see we've got Spotify audio right here. If I pause that audio, you can see the Spotify audio goes away. I play that audio and we see that it comes back. So now we've got Spotify and our game audio and our Discord audio all completely separate. We can separate all of the pieces of audio right in Prism Live Studio. It's absolutely freaking awesome. Prism Live Studio takes the virtual background to another level. So this next one is absolutely fantastic. As you can see, I have my camera in a nested scene, which I absolutely love but the type of camera that I'm using down here is called the Prism Camera. It gives you so many other really cool features. So let's just right click on that and go into the properties. You could also add a Prism Camera by clicking the plus, going to Prism Camera, 
and of course adding another one and all that sort of stuff but we don't need more than one we're just going to right click we're going to go to properties and we're going to go to a virtual background settings because this is what i'm interested in you can see i already have a pretty nice background that's cool but we can just remove that by clicking that right there and now our background's removed now if i don't have lighting proper or i have darker lighting you could see we get a little bit of ghosting but it's really not that big a deal because what you can do is go down here and add backgrounds. Any background you want, pretty awesome. Prism has all these video backgrounds that are totally free, but you can go over here to the free backgrounds, just add a simple background like this, or like this, or like this. But here's the best part. A lot of people want that DSLR look in their webcams. Well, you can blur up your background just by adjusting this. So you can select any of these free backgrounds that they have right here. You can blur them up to make it look like you're using a really fancy camera, even when you're not. It's absolutely awesome. I even have my own background here that I could select and add in, and then I can blur it even more to give it more of that bokeh effect. This is such an awesome feature, and it's so ridiculously easy to use. And then you can just click original, go back to your original background. It's, it's really awesome stuff. I, I really do think that this is the answer for those who are out there using a webcam that they really want to blur out the background, make it look special. Well, you can easily do that with this. And of course, if you're wearing clothes that aren't like what I'm wearing right now, or you have some better lighting, this can work pretty fantastic. And you can see, I don't have any problems where I'm really well lit. It's mostly in my shoulders and stuff where it has issues. So if you set this up right, you can remove the background really easily and set it up with some epic other backgrounds and get a lot out of this and it's so simple to use. And a lot of people don't know that Prism can just remove your background so easily. It's awesome. Prism makes it so easy to add your cell phone to the broadcast, either your screen or your camera. This last one that I'm gonna show you is really, really cool. So it's gonna involve your phone. It doesn't matter whether you have an iPhone or an Android phone, it's perfectly fine. But you go to the App Store and you download the Prism Live mobile app. It's, it's right here. And we're gonna click on that. If we can, we're gonna click on our Prism mobile app and bring it up. Then on our application over here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and add a Prism camera, but a different kind of Prism camera. Prism Mobile. We're gonna click OK and OK and we get this awesome little QR code and you can see it's bringing this up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this over here so you can kind of see. We're gonna take our phone. You can see it came up to a QR reader. We're just gonna put that over our thing and it comes up right here like this. Camera or screen. We're gonna select screen and we're gonna click connect. And basically, it asks you whether you wanna start the broadcast or however you wanna do it. You can turn your microphone on or off, however you wanna do it. And you can just click start broadcast. Once we click okay right here, you can see we have access to our phone. <laughs> so I can just put a game on here or whatever I wanna do and it will mirror everything that's on this phone. For example, let's see, I have games on here, I'm sure. We'll go ahead and load one of these up. Turn down the audio, and boom. You can see it's almost immediate. So if you wanna share something on your phone, it's super easy to do, really easy. What if we wanted to do something other than share what's on our phone that way though? So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna zip that away. We're gonna go back into Prism Mobile. And what I'm gonna do is disconnect. And it's gonna disconnect it from the computer. And I'm gonna go ahead and just right click, go to properties. We're gonna add again, and we're gonna go to camera this time. Click connect, and bada bing. We are getting our camera directly from our iPhone. We can use it um, we can use the audio and video, just video only, however we want to do this. But now we have our camera loaded in here, so we can use it as an accent to whatever camera we want to use 
down here. It's really that simple to use your cell phone in a Prism live stream. How, how could it be any easier? It's ridiculous. I absolutely love this feature right here. There is another new feature currently in beta I thought I'd mention. Soon you're gonna be able to use your cell phone to control your live stream. I can't wait to see this feature up and working very soon. Are there any features that you'd like added to Prism Live Studio? Let me know in the comments. Prism is always watching and reading every single one. Are there features of Prism that you wanna see me talk about more fully? Well, you can also let me know that in the comments as well. And if you want to see how Prism Live Studio stacks up against OBS, you should check this video out. Big thanks to Prism Live Studios for sponsoring this video. You can find their link and links to all the other sponsors who support the channel down below in the description under the heading sponsors. I couldn't possibly do this without them or you, so thanks. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.